This is what special counsel Jack Smith just put in his reply papers to federal judge Eileen Cannon. It's powerful, and he's sending a message to Judge Cannon. He says, no court would tolerate any other defendant deliberately creating such immediate risks to the safety of law enforcement, and this court should not wait for a tragic event before taking action in this case regarding Donald Trump's behavior that is placing the lives of FBI agents and Department of Justice officials in jeopardy. And in this motion, and I'll tell you more about it in a moment, Special Counsel Jack, in this reply, Special Counsel Jack Smith says, to protect the safety of law enforcement and the integrity of this proceeding, this court, Judge Eileen Cannon, this court should grant the government's motion to modify Trump's condition of release. So this filing by Jack Smith on Friday night was the government's, the government's reply in support of its motion to modify the conditions of Donald Trump's release. Donald Trump has been falsely saying that the Department of Justice and the FBI are trying to assassinate him. And Donald Trump, that's taking place because he says that there is a use of force policy that was associated with the search warrant executed at Mar-a-Lago in August of 2022. Now, the use of force policy is not unique to Donald Trump. It is the standard use of force policy when force can be used, when lethal force can be used on every single search warrant in the United States, regardless of where the search warrant is being executed. Donald Trump actually got extra favors that no normal person, no normal citizen would get, that the Secret Service was tipped off that there was going to be a search warrant executed at Mar-a-Lago back in August of 2022, so Trump wouldn't be there at all. But Trump is lying, saying that the DOJ and Biden and FBI are trying to kill him. Totally false. And that is placing the lives of law enforcement in jeopardy because Trump's violent supporters and Trump acknowledges that he riles up his violent supporters. He's made statements to that effect that Jack Smith puts in these reply papers that if they believe, as Donald Trump's lying to them, that their cult leader is trying to be assassinated by the Department of Justice and FBI, that they're going to take violent actions to try to harm or even kill FBI agents and Department of Justice officials in order to protect Donald Trump. That's the threat that exists right now, and this is not hypothetical. Special Counsel Jack Smith says, look, Judge Cannon, because you've waited and you have not moved expeditiously on our request, and in fact, you've put this elongated briefing schedule, there was a threat that just happened this past week to FBI and law enforcement as a result of uh, Donald Trump's behavior. And specifically, Jack Smith says, look, here's what went down. Just last week, a supporter of Trump called an FBI agent associated with the Hunter Biden case and claimed that if Trump wins re-election, FBI agents will be thrown in jail. And if he does not win, the agents will be hunted down and slaughtered in their own homes, after which we're going to slaughter your whole effing family. And then Jack Smith says, no court would tolerate another defendant deliberately creating such immediate risks to the safety of law enforcement. And this court should not wait for a tragic event before taking actions in this case. What Jack Smith's also saying, he's putting Judge Cannon on notice here, is if you don't grant the condition, modifying the conditions of release because of these threats, we're going to the 11th Circuit we are going to the 11th Circuit and we're going to get you removed. Uh, we're going to get you overturned and we're going to get you removed. Now, Jack Smith doesn't use that exact language, but it is clear from that sentence what he is implying to Judge Cannon by saying no other court would allow a criminal defendant to do this. He's saying, we're going to, we'll take a writ, we'll go up to the 11th Circuit and get you reversed and also say that you're not equipped to handle this case. Um, 
How much do you think you're paying in subscriptions every month? The answer is probably more than you think. Over 74% of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about. I definitely did, like the time I forgot that I subscribed to you know what streaming service, but thanks to Rocket Money, I'm no longer wasting money on the ones I forgot about, okay? Rocket Money, it's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. I can see all the subscriptions in one place. And if I see something I don't want, bam, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with just a few taps. I love how the dashboard for Rocket Money shows how this month's spending habits are compared to last month so I can clearly see my spending habits. Plus, They'll help me create a custom budget and keep my spending on track. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lower bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you. How good is that? Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a, over a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Can Cancel your unwanted subscription going to rocketmoney.com slash Midas Touch. That's rocketmoney.com slash Midas Touch, R-O-C-K-E-T-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash Midas Touch. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash Midas Touch. Check it out. The, let's just go through uh, Jack Smith's filing in a little more detail, if we can, if we may. Talks about how in late May 2024, Donald Trump made this series of false and inflammatory statements saying, knowing that it would inflame the listeners and viewers of his statements that he was the target of an assassination attempt when that was totally false. Jack Smith then brought this to the attention of the court. There was a briefing schedule after the court initially rejected Jack Smith's filing, trying to say that Jack Smith should have uh, engaged in a more thorough meet and confer process with Donald Trump's lawyers before filing it, which is just a ridiculous thing. And Jack Smith says, look, in Trump's papers, rather than address the risk of harm that his recent false statements created, Trump's paperwork, his opposition, focuses on his political campaign and the timing of campaign events. The government has absolutely no interest in those matters. None. Indeed, Trump has released a torrent of criticism of the Biden administration and the Department of Justice, and the government has made no motion to this court to limit or address such comments in any way. Trump is welcome to make such comments to his heart's content. They are simply not the government's concern. Instead, the government's sole purpose is to protect the safety of law enforcement professionals and the integrity of this proceeding and nothing more. Consistent with that purpose, the limitation that the government asked the court to impose is exceedingly narrow, focused, and fully consistent with the First Amendment. In resisting even these narrow limitations, Trump is left to argue that the First Amendment will be eroded unless he is permitted to lie about FBI agents intending to murder him and his family. The law requires no such thing. This is a pending criminal case, and like any other criminal defendant, Mr. Trump does not have an unlimited right to engage in speech that poses a risk to witnesses and threatens the integrity of these proceedings, nor can he evade that legitimate limitation by dressing up his comments in political speech garb. In his response, Trump backpedals, struggling to dilute, parse, and reinterpret his false and intentionally inflammatory comments in order to justify them. But there is no question that his statements were intentionally false, that they were designed to inflame and anger his audience, and that he knew his statements would do so. Every court that has examined this issue has recognized the threat caused by the longstanding and well-documented dynamic between Trump's comments and the predictable response from his supporters. And you go on to cite Justice Ngoron, Justice Mershon, Judge, Federal Judge Tanya Chutkin, the New York Appellate Division, the New York's highest court, the Court of Appeals. Shortly after the execution of the search warrant at Mar-a-Lago, one of Trump's supporters carried out an armed attack on an FBI office in the wake of Trump's statements regarding the search. 
And they go on to discuss what happened last week. While Trump boastfully acknowledges the impact that his words have on his listeners, he will just as predictably decline any responsibility for their actions should any further violence take place. Neither the government nor the court has that luxury. Protecting law enforcement is the government's duty, and we will respectfully ask the court to address the serious risks posed to law enforcement and to protect the integrity of these proceedings. One of the uh, strongest letters or strongest reply briefs I've seen Jack Smith file. And also, if you go to footnote two, Here's another warning that Jack Smith gives. Here's how he gives the warning. The 11th Circuit has not specifically addressed the First Amendment standard that applies to restrictions on a party's speech in a criminal case. Consistent with the Supreme Court's decision in Gentile, some courts have evaluated whether the restricted speech poses a substantial likelihood of material prejudice to these proceedings. Other courts have applied a more stringent standard requiring a clear and present danger or serious imminent threat to the proceedings. But what Jack Smith is saying is that regardless, because the proposed condition satisfies even the most stringent form of scrutiny, the court need not decide which level of scrutiny applies because the conduct's just so egregious. So a powerful motion there by Jack Smith or a powerful reply and you see that Trump's conduct has real world actions. And Jack Smith saying, you're going to have blood on your hands, Cannon. You're going to have blood on your hands unless you do the right thing. Well, we're going. The 11th Circuit. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Thanks for watching. Real quick, Meta just changed their algorithm to suppress political content. Please follow our Instagram at Midas Touch right now as we head towards 400,000 followers so you don't miss a beat.